Hello to you, our viewers. We welcome you to this edition of the News in English on the television with me, Sarah Shanhori. We'll begin with the headlines. Rwandans have continued to prepare for the 19th edition of the National Mshichirano Council. Former poachers living in areas around the country's Nyungwe National Park are now avid environmentalists, protecting the very animals they once killed by working as wardens. We thank you so much for joining us for this edition. We'll now take a look at the details. Citizens across the country have continued to see the National Umshichirano Council as a, as a platform that is helping to hasten the country's development. On the 23rd and 24th of January, that will be on Tuesday and Wednesday next week, it is slated that the 19th edition of the council will be held. We have the details with Prince Mansi. The National Umshichirano Council is a specialty of Rwandans to solidly address their challenges, as explained by some of the citizens. It is a council I would say that it is special. It is highly needed for leaders and citizens to sit and discuss on challenges demonstrated by citizens. We thank the President of the Republic because I also think that there are few leaders that do such things like giving citizens a platform. I am a seller. I used to be a street vendor. We were given capital and now we are collaborating in teams for inspiring others to move from the street and be formed sellers. There are changes because I can now pay school fees for my children. I graduated from one place to another, which I think is good. There are challenges they discuss and they are addressed. The Minister of Local Government, Jean-Claude Musabdimana, emphasizes that the National Mushichirano Council is a platform for demonstrating the achieved challenges and measurements towards the country's development. One of the priorities of the government is being a citizen-centered governance, and achieving that it is through various ways. One, a citizen is to play part in establishing policies through providing ideas. We also have a responsibility as leaders to inform the citizens on what is being done and the updates, hence taking measurements on where things are not efficiently done. The National Mushichirano Council is one of the principles we have in terms of being accountable as leaders and to citizens. This is really considered in the Mushichirano. The 18th National Mushichirano Council that took place in February 2023 adopted various resolutions, including boosting agricultural and livestock productivity, improving public transport in the city of Kigani, improving and integrating required services of our DB one-stop center, continuing implementation of measures to curb inflation, and building strong and secure families. The achievement of these resolutions is on a satisfying rate as elaborated by various administration levels. Prince Manzi, all TV News. Thank you, Prince. Now, former students of Lycée Notre Dame de Afrique de Nyundo in Ravu district, that's in the Western province, have asked young people to learn from the example set by its founder, the late Marie-Jeanne Nopin, who last year was posthumously awarded the Omurin Zivujihango Medal for her heroism during Rwanda's darkest period in history. The award has now been presented to the school. The, uh, the Belgian national founded back in 1967 after arriving here in Rwanda in 1952. In 1959, long before she founded her own school, she helped save Tutsi students at Murambi, who Parmehutu extremists were trying to massacre. While in 1973, when Tutsi students and teachers were being chased out of schools across the country, she refused that any at Lycée Notre Dame d'Afrique de Nyundo suffer the same fate while at the same time helping those who were in the most danger to escape to what was then Zaire and to Burundi. Between 1990 and 1994, she did all she could to help Tutsi that had been imprisoned by the then government accused of being collaborators of the RPF in Hotanyi who were fighting to liberate the country. 
Marie-Jean Nopin passed away in 2007. Participants of the Art Rwanda Ubuhans, the televised nationwide talent search project over the years say the initiative has helped them to build up their confidence and to become entrepreneurs and job creators, even able to employ others. Some have gone on to found their own modeling agencies, become musicians and artists. Art Rwanda Uhanzi is implemented by the Imbuta Foundation in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth since 2018. The project identifies and supports young and talented Rwandans within the creative arts industry in nine different categories, these being filmmaking, photography, digital art, acting and drama, dance, fashion design, music, literature, as well as visual and plastic arts. 138 talented young people have participated in the competition since it started, going on to generate as much as 150 million Rwandan francs from their skills and create 719 jobs in total. Executives at Imara Properties, a joint French Rwandan real estate venture, have reiterated their commitment to promoting quality and affordable housing here in Rwanda. Following the company's inauguration of its Isange Phase 2 estate at Revero here in Kigali City, those in the Phase 1 estate of the initiative have praised the homes for their quality and comfort. The first phase saw the construction of 15 houses that were completed in 2022, all of which have now occupants. Phase 2 features 12 apartments and 6 bungalows. a bit on the hill of uh, Ribeiro. If you look back uh, a bit more than one year ago, it was uh, fields uh, and uh, Ribeiro is changing very fast. Uh, Ribeiro is even said to be the new Nyaru Tarama. Uh, it's uh, urbanizing uh, very fast. You see a lot of constructions. If you look back two years ago, um, this part of the hill of Ribeiro was almost uh, not uh, built. There was a very little construction very few constructions and now we see more and more including the two first projects of uh, Imara Properties Isangi Phase 1 and uh, Phase 2. So the, the vision of uh, Imara Properties is to build uh, small communities, uh, small uh, mudugudu if we can say, uh, for people to, to live together and create a, a, a spirit uh, of uh, people uh, living in, uh, in communities. That's a part of uh, the vision and the values of, uh, of Imara. It was a uh, village, the, the houses are from 60 million uh, and we have some detached houses, uh, 85 uh, million. Uh, and for this project, Isange Phase 2 in Ribeiro, it's already uh, uh, sold out. There is only one uh, apartment left, which is at uh, uh, around uh, 145 uh, million Rwandan francs. With both phases of its current project at Ribeiro, uh, pardon me, with both phases of its current project located at Ribeiro, Imara Properties is also looking to implement projects at Chibagabaga and Kanombe. As we just noted, homes constructed by the company cost between 60 and 145 million Rwandan francs each. On Saturday, youth across Kigali participated in a special Umuganda community work where they planted up to 5,000 trees at Nyarutarama. This was done through the One Shot, One Tree campaign, an initiative of the Orion Basketball Club. Its president, James Mutabazi, demonstrates that since the inauguration of the initiative, over 51,000 trees have been planted. The past uh, five, six months, we planted over uh, 51,000 trees. And now we have planted today, uh, under the partnership with the city of Kigali and school, our official partner, we have planted uh, uh, 15,000 trees across all the districts of the city of Kigali. The youth is um, a key partner in every development. If you want sustainability, better engage the youth, those that have flesh minds, new ideas. The aim is planting so many trees, as many trees as possible. That is the theme. Plant as many trees as possible for the generation now and the generation to come. This special Omuganda is also part of the Isangano Yuru Yuruko, a youth festival aimed at teaching the youth more on the heroism and history of Rwandans. The Kigali City Administration demonstrates that this 25 days long youth festival will also include various activities such as workshops, talent acquisition and tournaments. There will also include discussions that will tackle on the challenges hindering the youth and their development. 
Now, banana farmers in Karonji district say they are ready to increase productivity, provided they are assisted to, uh, to get fresh banana trees to plant. This, is, this, is, this as a drive has began to revamp the banana industry in the district. Karonji district officials recently announced that increasing productivity is now a priority, collaborating with successful banana farmers to train others to produce similar results. Bananas are by far the most popular agricultural produce in Karonji, and farmers have long asked that a processing plant be set up for the fruit as well. But officials there have insisted that productivity must first be increased. More than 4,000 hectares of farmland in Karonji are covered by banana plantations, equal to the district's tea plantations, yet the latter has three processing plants, while the former has none, a glaring testament of the different productivity levels of the two crops. Now, since December, five people have been arrested on charges of damaging the Nyungwe National Park, a stark reduction in numbers compared to years past. Now that local communities around the park understand that it is far more beneficial to protect it, people who spent most of their lives poaching animals in Nyungwe and burning down its trees to clear land have now become wardens fighting the very practice they once were involved in. As many as 150 former poachers have now come together to form three cooperatives and five savings, uh, savings groups engaged in agriculture, tourism, and directly protecting the park as wardens. As always, I am glad you are able to join us for this edition. Join us again and stay with Wanda Television for more programs. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.